you've got a lot of big cards, major arcana cards coming in for this month. And um, it's a, the energy is very, very, I feel like it's very uplifting. But once again, you know, we are bogged down by human free will. So what you do with this energy is really up to you. But this is not a month for you to dilly dally or question, um, you know, your, your direction. This is really a good month for you to be on the up and up, make decision from a space of, um, I want to say higher consciousness and be very conscientious of what you're trying to achieve, what you're trying to do, what your motives are and be in alignment with doing the right thing. Okay. So let me unpack some of the energies. Um, while I was shuffling, while I was shuffling, um, first of all, I heard here losing your way need to, um, the need to have to kind of retrace your steps and find your way again. And that's a loaded, you know, uh, statement. What does exactly does that mean? And um, I feel like for many of you, this is sort of like walking on the spiritual path, okay? Um, and I feel one of two things. First of all, you have a lot of spiritual energies. This is people that have passed on. They're coming in to give you kind of like a nudge of encouragement. And they're also coming in to try to tell you as well, you need to reorient yourself, you need to get on the righteous path, and you need to, you know, um, walk in your truth, okay? Um, I do feel maternal, paternal grandparents coming in. Um, I do feel like, you know, the this is not just, you know, people that are around while you were growing up. I feel like you might have had some significant, um, like a, a grandfather or grandmother, that you that really shaped you that served as a mentor to you that really taught you everything or a lot of the things that you know right now that has really I want to say coddled you you know like someone who held you when you were a baby someone who saw the best in you even when you couldn't see the best in yourself you have somebody that has unconditional love for you, and this is somebody that might have passed on. They're showing in, up in this reading as a um, gentle reminder for you that, you know, and this is a message I always try to tell clients. We all have a really, really pure soul, all of us, all of us. It's just in our human manifestations, we do make mistakes, and we don't always operate at our best. And we don't listen to our soul's yearning and our soul's calling. And we make decisions from a space of fear, from a, a space of oftentimes ego and, you know, um, things like that. And so we don't always make the best decisions. And it's okay to, you know, forgive yourself for that. And it's okay to tell yourself this one action does not define my life, does not define my character. Aim to learn from it and to steer yourself into a space where you can make better decisions, into a space where you take ownership and accountability for the choices and the circumstances that you find yourself in. And so I feel like for some of you, you have somebody that loved you unconditionally and they've been around, they, they've seen you at your worst, they've seen you at your, your best, but in their eyes, you're always perfect. And you always try to cultivate that image of perfection when you're dealing with them. You might have hid some truths from them about your character because you didn't want it to tarnish their image of you. And I can assure you, you know, all of it is done in... Um, is done in vain because they have seen you at your worst. They have seen you at your best. They know everything there is to know about you and they still love you. So it's, it, it says a lot, right? That somebody can love us flaws and all. And when we can't even love ourselves. So I feel like the message of, you know, I forgive you, the message of self love, the, the message that they're bringing to the table is all about telling you, you need to love yourself. You're looking for love and validation from your external environment and from other people. But the process starts from within to see your own sense of self-worth in order to heal from whatever negative self-talk that you've been kind of muttering 
behind closed doors, uh, things that you've kind of swept under the rug, things that you really believe about yourself based on some of the actions and the choices that you've made. But these things are human errors. They can be fixed. They do not define you as a person. So until you can uh, get to that point where you admit these mistakes, until you get to the point where you can say, okay, I messed up and I'm going to change. I'm going to become a better person and heal from it. Okay, so Libras, the energy is not supposed to be heavy. It's supposed to be very uplifting. But many of you need to hear this message. Many of you need to kind of forgive yourself. Okay, so let's aim to get back on our righteous path, okay? And let me unpack that message once more. I tried to do it, and then I got different messages. So let me try to get you back on track. This is a card overall. It's a, it's a day of reckoning, right? It's sort of like um, when you're standing in front of a judge, and, and there's a ruling, Right. And you, they're just like, OK, um, let me look at all the events that have happened in your life, all the, the, the times where you made bad decisions. And I'm going to weigh that against all the times that you've, you know, selflessly served others, all the times that you've made good decisions and see what will um, weigh like what will outweigh the other. So the pros and the cons. Do you have more cons? Do you have more and more instances where you acted, you know, in a foolish manner, um, made more mistakes, or have you, you know, tried your best? And I feel like this is a, a card where, you know, other people see the real you, which is somebody who is very easy to get along with, someone who tries to make everyone feel included, to feel comfortable, to feel as a part of a team. You're also somebody who's very diplomatic. You have a lot of things that are, you know, going well for yourself. And then there are, you know, the shadow side, which is being too complacent, being too people pleasing and being too much like of a bandwagoner where you kind of let your voice kind of get drowned out by the crowd, where you kind of lose your path in order to accommodate other people, where you try to, you know, kind of, um, I want to say, like, take on what other people want versus finding out what you want, what you need as an individual. So I feel like the, the things, the harsh things and the harsh ways in which you judge yourself is unwarranted because other people don't see all of those things that you're seeing. They don't see your flaws. So you're being really, really hard on yourself and you shouldn't be. OK, so once again, I'm trying to get into finding your way and I'm getting um, I'm going off on a tangent. So let me try it once again. What is happening here? Show me the way and off track. OK, OK, so this basically deals with values, holding on very, very tightly to our values. And value systems are something that is very internal, but they can also come through family, okay? Institutions of family, things we grow up in, customs, beliefs, tradition, religion even, things that really shape us on a core level as to what we value, what we don't value, what we hold dear, and what we are willing or not willing to fight for. So this is kind of something that is shaped by your environment, especially if some of you have that mentor that has passed on, somebody that you loved very dearly and they saw the best in you. And they taught you a lot about values, you know, and they taught you especially the importance of family. Families stick together. Families are the ones that are always going to be around when the going gets rough and when you're kind of like at your wit's end, you have families to, to turn to. And families are the ones that are going to bring you, you know, a lot of wealth and prosperity. So when you're down on your luck, you can rely on family to get you work, to make those connections for you, to allow you to um, find 
find your financial footing and to allow you to find prosperity. So I feel like, you know, you've grown up believing all of this. Family is everything. Family is like the the glue that holds everything together. And also this sense of you can't do it alone, Libras. What are you talking about? You have to have your family. You have to consult everybody. Everybody needs to be okay with all of your life decisions. Otherwise, you're going to be ostracized. You're going to be outcast. So we need to approve all the choices that you're making. Otherwise, you're not one of us. If we don't approve, you don't get the green light. So there is, you know, the, the flip side of it, which is, do we really need to consult everybody? Are these belief system and customs and tradition and expectations, are they fair for you? And are they hindering your progress? Because it seems as if, you know, they value the collective so much and they devalue the individuality, the individual decisions. And it seems to me like there are too many people interfering with your life as well. So if they're telling you and they're, you know, you, you, you trust their wisdom and their years of life experience but i'm telling you i just feel like the times are changing so whatever has been working for them might not be applicable for you in this day and age in this time frame with whatever it is that you're dealing with so you need to make allowances for yourself to detract and not have to rely on other people and instead stick by your guns and what you truly value I see a lot of things here succumbing to tradition, using that as kind of like the um, the thing to fall back on so so that you don't have to take the path that is um, less taken or you don't have to trailblaze a new path for yourself. I'm also feeling as well, you know, this expectation here. And uh, I do see issues when it comes to sexuality, gender roles, sexuality, um, wanting to conform to a specific gender role or a specific, you know, like, um, for example, you might be um, homosexual and family expects certain things from you. So you might find yourself in relationships where it's not accepted by your family members. So then you go ahead and do what they expect of you and you're denying your own self, your own needs, and you're denying your own identity. I also see situations where there is like inheritance coming through from family members and they're giving you conditions like you need to do this in order to get this inheritance. If you don't do it, we're not going we're going to give your, you know, your share to somebody else. And so you conform just so you can, you know, get this piece of the pie. And in the process of conforming, you're doing something that might not be in alignment with you. And then I also feel there's just normal inheritance without strings attached, without expectations. That's going to be coming in as well. So I feel like a, a lump sum divided between three to five people. Okay, I'm getting here three to five, three, four, five. So three to five people, a, a huge inheritance, a, a big part of the pie. And I feel that you're going to end up with a huge chunk. So there are a lot of things here. And it, it seems to me like cultural assimilation there there might be cultural barriers um for some of you you might grow up in like a multicultural home where you know the the dad side of the family is one way mom side of the family is culturally different and so you find yourself kind of like at a crossroads and this is something i feel many children in multi or interracial you know um marriages can also feel very estranged like what am I where do I fit in culturally racially where do I fit in and so there's this major rift and divide between mom's side of the family and dad's side of the family and the value system might actually be in conflict with one another and then as a result you're kind of like stuck in the middle what's right and what's wrong Many of you are, have been raised with, you know, the values from your mom's side of the family. And then when it comes to 
you might have like had to switch around and go to over to the dad side of the family and you're finding that things are really different things could be chaotic and you're not really sure where you stand so i see many of you once again you know losing your way and i feel the main message is you need to figure out where you stand it's not so much about what other people expect from you it's not so much about what other people teach you it's about you finding your own path based on what is important to you what defines you what do you believe in what will you defend and if you have an Aquarius person in your life okay so this is uh, the card of Aquarius if you have a Taurus in your life this is a card of Taurus and if you have an Aries in your life, this is a card of Aries. You have an Aquarius, a Taurus, or an Aries. Talk to them about values. These are people that know exactly where they stand. The first two, because they're fixed signs. The, the last, the, the Aries, is because they're the first sign of the zodiac. They always know how they feel. They always know what they feel about anything. And they will fight for the things that they believe in leos as well actually if you have these people around you taurus aries aquarius and you're trying to you know get some mentorship and you're trying to figure out like where do i stand how do i feel about this they're going to give you a piece of your mind they're going to also uh, enlighten you as to what individuality mean what does it mean to really believe in something and fight for something and hold strong convictions because I feel like that that sense of conviction is what you've been lacking and so if you're lacking the inability to you know fight for something strongly believe in something and have really strong convictions you haven't really been living your life you're just kind of like stuck in limbo moving along you know the the timeline of your life and other people are making the decisions for you. You're not involved in the decision-making process and you're just kind of pulled along, kind of like on a close line. So that's what it means to lose your way or to not have, not be in alignment with your own path. You need to get yourself to the point where you are the agent of change in your own life you're the one on the in the driver's seat making the executive decisions telling others i'm not going along with that i want this and giving people kind of like a piece of your mind and this is what i'm seeing here this is sort of like i'm not listening listening to any of you guys this is what i want and i'm going for it and you don't need approval. You don't need validation. You don't even need a conversation. You don't even need the okay from other people because you are sure this is something that you want. And so you're telling them, just hush. I'm going to do what I want because I know where I stand. So Libras, you've got some big, big things that you need to really decide on and you can't really bounce ideas off of other people because they're going to hijack that conversation and they're going to tell you what they want to happen to you rather than taking your needs your wants your future into account and confirm with me if this is true if this is true for your case then please try to you know make the decision yourself if in particular you are have been surrounded by people who are you know let me just say really strong mother figures who are a little bit dogmatic like mother aunts grandma grandmothers um people who are just like this is the way it is and that's it okay and then if you have father figures as well who are the same way like they um, it's more about what they want and not so much about what you want father figure that might be a little bit distant a little bit more militaristic and they they might tell you you know like for example if you're a boy um, they might say like um, 
be a man, you know, things like that. Like they might, they might do things to that they feel for their generation might be normal. But for you, it's very emasculating. Imagine growing up and, you know, someone keeps telling you, be a man, don't cry. Like it's appropriate. Like that's normal. So I feel like there are, it's like tough love, but, but in a way where it's really making you question your ability, your masculinity, your, whether or not you're lovable. So if you have, you know, grown up with these types of energies and these types of people that are close to you and, and they're supposed to be taking care of you, but they behave in this way. This is a message for you in particular, for you to shrug it off and really find your own path and kind of leave this energy behind. Tell them to take a hike. Tell them, I'm not listening to you. I'm going to go off and follow my own path. So aside from that, aside from these, you know, um, cosmic energies that are coming through, you have a new job here, Libras. This is a beautiful, beautiful thing. This is something that you've been hoping and praying for for a very, very, very long time. And this is a job that will restore your self-esteem. And, you know, we don't need a job to really boost our self-esteem. But I feel like this is something that's more than a job. It's going to be very transformative in the way you live, in the way other people see you, in the way that you're making money, in the way that your life is going to change. So it's almost like getting that really, really good job so that you can move out on your own. Leave the nest and leave the toxicity behind. It could also be getting a job where you can travel to another country, to another state, and just, you know, leave this family situation mess in your past. It can also be a job where, this is what I call like a movie star aspect, okay? The star and the ace of pentacles. Being in the public limelight, getting a lot of recognition, um, having people like adore you, getting uh, photographed and, and, and things like that. Um, I'm also seeing as well, um, it's weird, but I'm getting like nude photo shoots. It's something like that might be frowned upon, but you feel like it's art. And so you're going to do it. So I, I feel something like that, something that's like non-traditional. And you're fearing a, a, a disapproval from your environment, from, from, from family members, from the more, you know, traditional orthodox people in your family. But who cares? This is something that you've got to do. And I feel for some of you, this might have been done because you were in survival mode. You might have taken jobs or gigs or might have been led astray. And now you're regretting it and you're fearful that they're going to find out about your past. Once again, the things that you had to do in the past do not define you. They do not shape you. Nor is there anything wrong with them because you had to do what you had to do. If they don't understand, let them be, okay? I do see some shame and guilt associated with this, but you're going to be hitting some really good fortune. And the only thing that's really holding you back here is to forgive yourself is to look deep within and just say, you know, despite everything that you've been through, you're still lovable and you need to start pouring this energy into yourself to kind of restore yourself first before you can accept all of these blessings with a pure heart, okay? So I feel like we have a lot of good things. If you have been facing a lot of financial instability as well, shifting from one job to the next, having, you know, living by uh, paycheck to paycheck, having to uh, even go to those, um, pay, uh, what are those payday advance places? Because the bills were not coming in, in on time or the, 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 the paycheck is not coming in on time. People making you promises they couldn't keep. And so if you have been operating from that space of insecurity and you've had to rely on family members, I feel like something is going to break through where you will get that financial blessing and you will get that financial stability once again. 
and you're going to be able to even repay the people that have helped you in the past and to move forward okay so there's a lot of financial prosperity and i feel like this energy came in for aquarius and gemini gemini has the same card as you and um aquarius they were just building up wealth they were they're um they're distracting themselves with work so they they became like workaholics to kind of like forget about the emotional aspect but either way they're you know there's a huge uptick for air signs when it comes to financial prosperity and new jobs new work that's also available so i feel like the only thing here is find your own path stop waiting around for stuff making things happen for you guys make things happen go out there get your hands dirty um call them back if you have been applying for jobs left and right and they're not calling you call them back and just be like hey i'm just following up i'm still interested it shows initiative it shows leadership qualities okay it doesn't show desperation i don't see anything in here that indicates to me desperation so if they're not getting back to you you need to make that call you need to break the ice and you need to own up to it and not be so awkward okay just like hey i'm calling because i want this job i'm still interested are you interested in me and then i also feel in your love relationships too there are a lot of uh, expectations here from family from culture from customs and it it seems as if family members might be a little bit too involved so you know relationships love relationships it's between the two people that are involved i mean in cases where you have children but the relationship is ultimately between the two people keep it as a dyad okay keep it contained within the people that it's relevant to and keep everybody else outside of it that's just the smart and the proper way to do relationships and if you're able to do that then decisions regarding relationships should be very easy. I'm seeing here, let me see, for love and relationships, what's going on for you guys? Let me move this up a little bit. I'm seeing here Aquarius, Taurus, Aries. What's going on in relationships? Disputes over money, disputes over financial security, housing, um, the, the financial foundation, okay? So possibly wanting to extract yourself, wanting to leave a relationship, but there are too many financial considerations to take into account. Um, you might be shouldering the financial burden, and if you leave your relationship partner, he or she, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, cannot do it on their own and you feel bad and feeling bad doesn't really help your situation libras i understand that some of you would feel bad but feeling bad doesn't really solve anything and then i also feel somebody who's very very self-serving um, a relationship that is very lopsided if you have here the king and the queen they're not looking at each other and one person's upside down. So it's somebody who's very self-serving. Um, they don't really put your needs first. Okay? Something for you to think about. Could be an earth sign. Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Could be somebody that um, you thought you could rely on. And I feel like over time they have changed. Things got to their head. They might be the one that have lost their way. And so this is a situation, a conflict, something um, like a, a court case or a, a, an appeal needing to reach a final solution or needing to reach some type of a consensus with this person. So you thought it was done and over with. The conflict is coming back around and I feel like you need to just extract yourself. What else is coming in for Libra? Love and relationships. Okay, so Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. 
Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius. This is somebody possibly in your work environment, okay? Um, the Three of Pentacles basically means the, the work connection is really good. The two of you are working together very effectively, very um, cogently is what I'm sensing. It's like great communication, great rapport, great trust in one another, but there's always other people crowding the space, okay? And we also have as well the world. And the world, it's unfinished business. It's sort of like we work together. It's going to be really awkward to start a relationship. Or it's a relationship where communication is really great, but it's hard to get the physical sexual relationship started. I don't know if that makes sense. And it could be because you work together. It could be because it's awkward. It's because could be because other people are there and you really shouldn't be doing that in the workplace. But that's what I'm hearing. It's because other people are there, which is kind of weird. Um, it's also with the world um, indicates to me restriction because of work. So you have somebody in your work environment that you're really liking. Uh, fire signs, Sagittarius, Aries, Leo, Sun, Moon, or Rising. They might be, there might be a third party as well. You might like this person. They're married. They might like you. You're married. And so the relationship isn't really going anywhere. It's just stuck in limbo. It's like this. So this might be the, the Aries person. You could also be in a position of power and you feel like they're a really, really good match for you. But timing does not permit the two of you coming together, okay? So that's like for a fire sign. Excuse me. Let me see what else here. So the Aquarius is the last one. A lot of air signs are getting together with air signs. Okay. So. Okay. So I looked at the Aquarius and great chemistry and passion. There might be children involved here, which is not allowing you to sever ties. You might be in a relationship here with a water sign. So a Sagittarius, uh, I'm sorry, um, Sagittarius. You might be in a relationship here with a water sign or the other person might be in a relationship with a water sign. Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. And there are children involved. There's great chemistry, children. There isn't any movement happening here. I feel like it's a, a relationship where there is true love and affection, but nothing is being done because there's a third party still connected. Like there, somebody is connected to a third party and nothing is being done. So aim to do the right thing, um, Libras. And I feel like, you know, the energy here is very linear. So it's pointing to one path that you need to take. And it's pointing to the fact that if you don't cut yourself down from this situation, if you don't make a decision, it's not going to come in for you. So you need to be the one to be the catalyst or the agent of change in your own life. And I also see the complacency. Complacency is a big problem with uh, Libras. You might have had a lot of powerful people in your life, really assertive, like super type A people that, you know, know what they want and they always move things along. And in the process of moving things along, they disrupt everybody else's life. So things have always happened to you. You never had to make things happen because you were constantly surrounded by these type A, like movers and shakers. And now that you're in a place where they might be marginal to your life, and you're the one that's like this and you're waiting for something to shake up. You're waiting for things to happen for you and nothing is really happening. So you need to be that catalyst of change. You need to initiate. You need to change some things and get yourself back in realignment with your rightful path. Okay. Um, I'm going to end it right there. I do wish you all the best and I'm really glad to see this for you, but I feel like the energy is very intense. What you do this month is very 
uh, important. It's a pivotal month and the rest of the energy, the rest of the year, the rest of the energy for the year rests upon the decisions that you make this month. Do not do it lightly. I feel like you need to go inwards. Talk to your guides. If people have passed on, ask them for advice. 